So today we're going to go over five tips for focusing on the Olympus system for photographing wildlife. Now these five tips are things that I use constantly in the field and it helps me speed up the process and it also helps me acquire focus for you know, fast wildlife and sometimes the focus can just keep chasing and you can't get it. So some of these things can really help out. Some of them I've set and they stay the same in the camera all the time and a few of them are things that I switch on every now and then to really help me out. So let's dive into it. Number one. To speed up the process a little bit in the field, I set up so that I don't have that many available focus points to me. Uh, what I mean by that is usually and by default I shoot with one, the smallest point in the middle and um, I cycle through, I have a couple of other modes available to me. But I don't like to have that many so that when I need to switch it, there's not that many to switch from. If you have loads of custom focus points and a lot of different grids, when you have to react quickly in the field, it becomes quite time processing to cycle through all those available options to you. So I like to go into the menu and take off loads of the focus points that I don't need. I have four available to me. I would only have three, but one of them is default and I think you have to have it. So this change this we'll go into the cog on the menu from there we're going to a2 and we're going to the camera and the cross and the mode settings and here you just tick the ones that you use and you untick all the other ones for me I only use the one focus point in the middle I have one surrounded by four and then I have a five by five grid and that's it and that just speeds up the process for me in the field so that when I have a slightly different subject or it comes a little bit close or it goes too far away uh, then I can quickly cycle through and just you know pick my one point my one or four in the middle or my five by five very often when I'm twitching to if I birds in flight or something like that I'll switch to five by five uh, and the same for one with four and then the one in the middle is usually my default because I like to just get that one focus on the eye and get my shot. Now, my second tip, I like my camera to remember where my focus point is last time I was portrait and last time I was photographing like this horizontally. For sometimes when you're photographing wildlife and especially if something comes close, yesterday I was out photographing brown hairs and as they were getting really close, I wanted to switch to portrait and having that focus point ready then up kind of on the one third from the top somewhere where I can focus on the eye of the hair is really helpful. So I like to have that switched on. So we go in here to the cog, A2, go down to orientation linked and I just tick the autofocus target point. So now then I can now set in the middle for landscape and then we can go into portrait and I can set it somewhere else and it will remember where that was and I can switch back and forth. It's really helpful and just speeds up that, that microsecond that it sometimes takes to get focus in the field. Now here's a feature that I started using recently that I'm quite enjoying because I used to have my camera set up so that I have a, a preset for birds in flight and on that preset I would use bird tracking. And I'm still experimenting with that. So what I like to do here is I like to do something which is set home and that means that when I press the joystick on the back I have a certain default setting that gets activated when I press it. And if you press it again, it goes back to what I was using. To do this, I go into the cog A2 and set home. And in here, I set the autofocus mode. I set that to continuous autofocus and tracking manual focus. What that means is that I'm always in continuous focus because I use back button focus. And I'm also activated tracking there, which is set to the bird tracking, uh, which is on the EM1X. You probably don't have that on the other models, but you can set up your preferred autofocus mode there. And for the autofocus target mode, I go by 5x5 five five grid, which is the one that I find best for me for capturing birds in flight. And I have a video on capturing birds in flight and the settings I use for the Olympus system, so check that out if you're interested. Now for the autofocus target point, I just set it to the middle on either orientation because that's where I like to have it when photographing birds in flight. After you've chosen your settings, that's going to be the default set to home. We go back out to the menu, we go down to, and we need to assign a button. So on the EM1X and on the EM1 Mark III, you can use the center button, so basically the joystick. And you can go in here and you can choose that as you're gonna to set to home default. If you have a different model or if you wanna set a different button, you go into button function and you can choose one here. Uh, for instance, this uh, FN button here, quite a handy one in here and find a little 
a uh, little cross and HP home. Whatever setting I'm in, I can quickly just press my joystick and it'll aut automatically jump to that. It'll aut automatically jump to a five by five grid, continuous autofocus and tracking, and I'm ready to capturing birds in flight with the bird tracking that's on the e one x So really useful for me and I can quickly just press it again and it goes back off. Now, one thing that I have noticed that's happened with my system here, sometimes I maybe I've shot for a while and it doesn't go back immediately when I press it. I'm not sure why that is and um, if somebody knows why that is and if it happens to you I'd love to hear about it uh, but it's a new feature that I'm trying out but I'm really enjoying it so far and it does help me speed up and quickly change my settings and it means that I don't have to waste one of my custom presets on that feature which is what I used to do. Tip number four, my probably most used uh, function for photographing birds is the autofocus limiter. Some of your lenses will have an autofocus limiter on uh, the lens itself and you can kind of switch that back and forth but it is quite limiting actually uh, because one of mine here the 300 has it to 1.4 to 4 meters then it's got 1.4 to infinity which is kind of like turned it off and then it's got 4 to infinity 4 meters to infinity now that doesn't really help me that much the one I'm mostly interested in here is 1.4 to 4 meters which is excluding everything that's in my background but sometimes 4 meters is quite still quite close like very often I'm photographing birds that are a little bit further up than that and sometimes much further away than that. So there are two times that I use this feature a lot. One of them is photographing birds in flight. The background might be far away, my birds might be flying about 50 meters away from me or something like that. And my autofocus will then start catching the background even though it's hundreds of meters away. So that is a really good time to use the autofocus limiter so that it won't focus on that background. And on your OMD system, you can go into the menu, you can go into the cog, and we can go down to A3 and choose AF limiter. And go down to on, go to the right, go to settings. And there's actually three different settings you can do there. So that means that you assign, you can assign a button to the autofocus limiter, which I highly advise you doing. And then it's just a quick click of that button. I have mine set up to ISO. Um, my, my button layout on the EM1X is actually quite maybe different. I do a lot of things differently. If you are interested in seeing how I do it and receiving regular uh, Olympus for wildlife uh, tips, videos, and some posts, you can sign up to my newsletter. I'll put a link below and I'll release some videos there that I don't release on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, follow the link below and sign up. Anyways, depending on the subject you're photographing on the day, say I'm photographing birds in flight, I want to exclude everything in the background. I might set this to something like 100 meters, 200 meters. It all depends on what you're photographing, how far away that background is. Now, I use the guess, kind of guesstimate my background, test it, and then um, kind of go from there. However, I did a video for Birds in Flight with the Olympus, and I gotta give a shout out to Paul and Vic in the comments who suggested that the way to figure out how far away your background is, is to use the preset for manual focus. And to do that, you go into the super control panel, and you go into the basically focus modes and you can head over to pre-MF, hit info, and here you can go over and you can measure how far away that background is. So you basically just press the shutter button here then even if you're in back button focus, which I am, it still goes to this. And that'll give me how far away that background is. And that means I can update my autofocus limiter to somewhere be before that. Now, as they mentioned as well in the comments, it's not always 100% accurate. Right now, my background over there is 33.5 meters. I wouldn't set my autofocus limiter to 33 meters. I'd back it off with quite a few more meters because it's not 100%. And also, if I'm photographing birds in flight, I might not even want to photograph birds that are hundreds of meters away because they're going to be so tiny in the frame anyways. So maybe I'll set it to 150 meters or something like that, even if my background is a thousand meters away. And then you can go in and set up this to a, a button that specifies the autofocus limiter in action. And I, like I said, I put mine to the ISO button right here. When I press that, it activates. Now, the other time that I find this really useful is like right now I'm photographing birds and its branches here. And sometimes a tiny bird on a tiny branch can sometimes fool the autofocus system a lot. And I used to use the lens here, um, the lens limiter up to four meters. But like I said, that's not always useful. Sometimes I'm further back than that. So then the autofocus limiter again really helps. And I can set that to something like 10 meters or something like that. I'm just focusing from 
the minimum focus distance to 10 meters. And it just helps, you, you'd be amazed at how quickly it requires autofocus when you use that. So be sure to use that, it's an incredible powerful way that will just really help you acquire focus. Another thing I would advise you to do uh, when using autofocus limiter, and this unfortunately this will probably only work on the M1X and the EM1 Mark III, but that is to save the AF limiter to your menu. So go down to A3, AF limiter, and press the red button here to save it to your menu so that you have quick access to it, because you will need to go in and change uh, what that background should be for different situations, depending on what you're photographing on the day. But it's absolutely worth it. For my final tips, it has to do with the clutch that you'll find on a lot of lenses. And I've turned mine off. I used to use it in the beginning because I thought it was quite useful, but I accidentally trigger it so often and then autofocus is unavailable to me when I trigger it. So when I, when I accidentally flick it back. So I don't use that anymore, but I like to have manual focus available to me all the time. And that's something that goes really hand in hand with using back button focus. Now, if you don't shoot with back button focus, I would suggest that you assign a button to switch to manual focus or just keep the clutch on if you prefer that. Uh, and also a really handy thing to use when you use manual focus is peaking, turn peaking on. And that just means that it'll highlight a color, usually red, uh, when something is in focus and it can really help you out. First of all, you need to set up back button focus if you need, if you want to do it exactly like I've done here. And I have a video on how to do that, so you can check that out and also talk about some of the benefits of doing it. So first we're going to A1 and we're going to AF plus MF and we'll turn that on. That just means that you can have manual focus available to you by just any time you can turn this dial. Now some people will find that, for instance, if you line on a bean bag or something like that, you know, it might accidentally move. So at those times you may want to turn it off. I don't, I tend to just refocus and keep my button on the back button focus. I'll, I'll refocus really quickly anyway, so I don't, I don't turn it off. Uh, then we go into the autofocus mode and set that to continuous autofocus and MF. And we'll go down to AF and we'll go down to MF assist. We'll go in here and we'll turn peaking on. And MF clutch, set that to inoperative so that nothing happens when you flick this. Because I'll walk around and I'll have this hanging around my shoulder and this kind of bumping along my leg and sometimes that'll just flick off then or you know, it can so easily happen. So I just like to keep it inoperative. I hope you found that useful. If you haven't come across my channel before, my name is Espen and the channel is all about wildlife photography. So a lot of my videos I will talk a little bit about settings for wildlife and Olympus, but most of the time I'll take you guys out into the field for some wildlife photography. So if you're interested in that, join me, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified. I'll catch you in the next video.